I just imagine her up there working on my behalf. You know, my daughter's down there. She's trying to be an actor. I don't even know what that is. But I, I feel like she's that little angel on my shoulder bossing people around in heaven. And then the Lord shows her a picture of you holding an Oscar. So she did okay. She did okay. That is Oscar winner Octavia Spencer talking about her late mother in our interview back on March 12th of last year. We didn't know it at the time, but that conversation with Octavia would be our last face-to-face -face Sunday sit-down for a very long time. The world screeched to a halt the next day, and a year of interviews that began for us with a dreamlike convertible ride around Beverly Hills with Al Pacino moved for most of the last nine months to a Zoom computer screen in a room above my garage with our superstar guests flipping open their own laptops at home. A special look back now at a year of Sunday sit-downs. Yo, Willie, bless up. We're making a film. Oh, Willie and Al. Go <laughs> see it. All right, all right, all right. Love My kids movie. love a good Willie Guys interview. Oh, do they, they? they Big love. Sunday today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you were supposed to be on tour right now. Instead, you're doing Zoom calls with me. This is the highlight of my day, Willie. Oh, uh, well, well, it must be a slow day over there at your house then. <laughs> Are we going to use this camera too? Because I'm wearing like uh, my. <laughs> My you have the slippers on? And my <laughs> this year it really blows. <laughs> I think most of us thought, all right, we're down for a couple of weeks, or we didn't know. We tried some rescheduling initially, and then when that didn't work, we said, well, let's just move it to next year and, and hope for the best. We had about three days of just body aches, but the the lasting effect is the loss of taste and smell. Any cabin fever whatsoever for you? Not as much as I, I would think I would have. I mean, Chris and I were talking about it. Like, we haven't been apart for, you know, even a night, like a dinner for so long. Quarantine has been a lot of rosé. <laughs> <laughs> Those first few months must have been tough. Around the middle of May, I was like curled up in a ball in bed, <laughs> going, I can't make dinner anymore. <laughs> I can't not see my friends. What are the challenges of coming back into this space under these circumstances? The read-through we're doing now starts there and goes all the way to there, with everybody at a table six feet apart and microphones. It's an honest room. It's now just a much bigger honest room. I just learned to just be grateful for what, what I have, and that's the time off. I just stay home, and that's, I never shower, so yeah, <laughs> that's not true. I shower all the time. I don't know why I say that. I'm a very clean person. <laughs> I'd say the biggest challenge for me was just homeschooling. Amen. It was really, really hard. And then when the pandemic came, oh, that's the wrench. Oh, that's the, that's the wall of the roadblock. Nah, not over here. We looking at that wall and saying, boom. Actions speak out of love songs. Uh, I think we've seen so many images of black people in mourning and uh, outrage. I feel like this album is kind of an antidote to that. Though this album wasn't written in response to what it happened just now, I think we could all use a lift right now and, and some love right now and some joy. I don't want them hating people they disagree with. The, the whole play is about a black man being brought up on charges that are false. That's not something that's not happening today. I had this flashback where I remembered vividly, my God, I was eight years old when the AIDS epidemic hit South Africa, and we were going through our, the, the first real struggles of having apartheid be dropped. That country almost broke out into a civil war. And it helped me in a weird way to kind of navigate how I went about telling my girls what was happening right now in a way that wouldn't freak them out or scare them or wouldn't feel appropriate, but also felt truthful. What would you say is the, the guiding philosophy of the show? I do think that there are more commonalities between us than there are differences. And so that connection is a huge thing for our show and having representation, inclusivity. That's something that I've just been really focused on over the last years that I've had more, you know, I guess power in the situation. Making sure that women are being interviewed, people of color are in the room and getting opportunities. And we're learning all the time, men, I think. we're. We've got a lot of catching up to do, but change doesn't come easy, I think, for a lot of people. It's so important to have a voice 
and a face and a name like yours saying, hey, this is part of my life. I just remember saying it like publicly. I suffer from anxiety and depression. And then looking around like, whoa, I'm not alone. Hey, you suffer from alone. Whoa. <laughs> you know? Come on, bring it in there. Talk that. What was the magic you felt when you first started doing comedy with Jordan? I think part of it was not only a shared knowledge of the art, but also a shared experience as people, both being biracial, uh, both mm -hmm. being raised by single parents. Like the universe just made that happen. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. I guess I'm lucky. That's what I think. Deep down, I think I'm lucky. I've often said that I count my blessings a lot more often than I count my money. I don't want to sell anything buy anything or process anything as a career. It's weird, it's like having your, your yearbook pictures on cable all the time. On show night, this is yes. the Luke Combs drink. It's right? Jack and Diet, that's, that's it. It's not good. as many it's calories. You. As you can tell, I'm also into fitness <laughs> a lot, so. If the guy that built the venue could see me on the stage, he would be a little bit bummed about it. At age four, I knew I wanted to be a nightclub entertainer, because I wanted to be like Ricky Ricardo, the husband on I Love Lucy, right. which had gone off the air by the time I was born a solid 30 years previous. <laughs> the minute you guys go to commercial break, it is an all-out sprint. All it's time. the only time I ever feel like an athlete. <laughs> From this moment. Um, that girl that was dreaming about just getting out of poverty, making it meant that I could live like the average person. Is it a strange thing, Ben? I have to imagine that the entire country is sort of grieving. I have to say it's been really heartwarming to see how beloved by people he was. I, I know this would have made him feel great. You know, that as a kid from the Lower East Side, I grew up very poor during the Depression. It was his dream to be in show business. Please wrap up. I'm wrapping up. I'm sorry. I'm freaking out. I mean, every actor practices their Oscar speech in the mirror. Don't, don't let them. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Because they deny it. They deny it. I did. Yeah. I did. I'm Olaf. <laughs> You're creepy. So what do they think that their dad is Ola? They, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. For them, it's a bragging right. You're a repeat guest, by the way. Well, I will two time any time for you. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. This may be my, what do they call it, swan song. No. But I love it. Well, how does anything compare to this? When life is good again. What would you say to, to your fans and to the America right now? I think we've just become so divided because people just seem to love to hate. Lord knows. I hope next year is better than this one. We can't save the world, but we can save the world we're living in. Maybe I'm dreaming, but I don't think so. I mean, that's the thing. It's like optimism is a choice, but it, in a way it isn't. I don't think there's any other viable choice than, than, than to hope for the best and work for it. You need to try. The only failure is if you don't make the attempt, you've got to try. It's a daring thing to do, but sometimes you should just say your dreams out loud and you never know, man. They could just come true. They could just come true. Our thanks to all of those stars who took the time either to sit down with me or to log in, to unmute themselves, and to have those great conversations from wherever they could find a quiet spot. And the biggest of thanks to our bookers, producers, and editors who shape our Sunday sit-downs and put them together so beautifully, especially this year when they had to cross their fingers that a movie star's Wi-Fi would hold up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit-Down podcast to hear the full-length version of all those interviews and of the big ones ahead in 2021. You can find that library on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.